I love math. I love math because of what it can do for me in my everyday life. Should I take the $1,000 rebate and the 4% interest on a car loan? Or should I take the 0% car loan? I love math before, because of where it's taken me. In the immortal words of Dr. Seuss, oh, the places you'll go. It took me from a child in Jacksonville, Florida and opened up the world. It took me from NASA, the headquarters in Houston, to the Procter & Gamble headquarters in Cincinnati. It helped me transition between many different jobs and roles in many different business sectors. From science and research, to business and strategy, from marketing and sales, to innovation and product development, from hardware products to healthcare IT. But, sadly, <laughs> you, you laugh because you know the truth. Sadly, many, uh, no, a few Americans can say they love math. Instead, you're much more likely to hear, I'm not a math person, I'm just not good at math. In fact, one third of American adults can only do math at the most basic level. And our students aren't much better. And every international test for our middle school and high school students over the last 30 plus years, we've consistently been in the bottom of the top 25 nations. It's keeping our students out of STEM majors in college. It's hurting our graduation rate in community colleges. These students in community colleges have to take remedial math for a year. They get frustrated. They're not getting credit for it. 43% of community college students in Iowa drop out after the first year. In fact, it's hurting our national competitiveness. In today's world, 90% of jobs require some sort of post-high school education. But sadly, our students are, are not able to to do the kinds of things they need to get into the majors that are getting them into the middle class lifestyle. They're ending up as retail clerks. Nothing wrong with that, but it, over time, you want to improve yourself, and they can't because they don't have the required math skills. Well, why do so many people struggle with math? Most people agree there are three main reasons. First, we teach to the test. That means we have people memorize processes we don't have them understand concepts. And then when I talk about uneven teacher education, think about this. Every elementary teacher has to teach math, whether they like it or understand it. And then the biggest reason is commitment and resources to change. Let me give you an example. In the 60s, at the height of the space race, the federal government realized our math education was lacking. We had people develop new math programs and there were some real good ones. One of them was showing really good promise in, in test schools. Japanese heard about this, came over, learned how to do it, learned about it, took it back to Japan. Within five years, they had it spread over the entire country, and very soon their test scores started rising. Other Asian countries noticed this and adapted, adopted those math teaching methods. And today, the Asian countries are in the top of those 25 top nations. Well, literacy and numeracy are related. And importantly, the most important part of those two happen before third grade. Have you ever heard the saying, before third grade, a student learns to read. After third grade, she reads to learn. In fact, if they're still struggling with reading at the end of third grade, they're very likely to never get better. And they're four times more likely to drop out of high school. Same with math. When a student is still struggling with math in fourth grade, he will likely never get any better, and he will not have access to the ton of technology jobs that make a lot, up a lot of our jobs today and more in the future. Well, with all this against me, how did I come to love math? I didn't really know until the first day I walked into my son's Montessori school when I enrolled him in pre-kindergarten. I saw a table filled with trays of beans and students scooping one third of a cup and putting it into the one cup. One, two, three. They were learning counting, volume, fractions, 
all while playing with physical activities that represented math concepts. There were many other activities, probably 50 of them in that classroom, each with concrete hands-on examples for students to play, discover, learn, and they didn't even realize a lot of times they were learning. These are four, five, six, four, and five-year-olds. Whether they learned together or they learned independently. Now, what does this have to do with me? I didn't go to a Montessori school. Well, my earliest memories, some of my earliest memories, I was five or six years old, and I was helping my father add a room onto the house similar to this. And we would measure, we measured the perimeter of the concrete slab so we could determine how many two by fours we were going to buy. And I learned length and I learned perimeter. We, just, we determined how many squares, tile squares we needed to make the floor. I learned area. We determined how many bags of cement we needed to make the small six inch land, deep landing at the bottom of the stairs, volume. And because I was the oldest of five, I was lucky enough to have to help my parents with cooking, working on the car, laundry, gardening, you name it. Many of these things involve basic math skills. I was learning without knowing it. I had a Montessori school experience in my home. And how can we help our children learn to love math? We can't wait for the public schools or the private schools, if they're not doing it already, to change. It's incumbent on all of us, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, big sisters, little sister, excuse me, big brothers, big sisters, even teachers who don't like math. If you hear, first of all, stop saying, I don't like math. I just can't do it. And if you hear a child say that, please stop them and help them understand that it takes time and practice to learn anything. All these things that you can help your child get just a little bit of time and a few practical hands-on things, all these things help with counting and concept relation and, and, and all sorts of math concepts. For example, if you're teaching a child how to tell time, the concept of a quarter of an hour, 15 minutes, you can show them on a face of a clock, 15, 15, 15, 15. It's one fourth of an hour. Then you relate that to ch making change out of a dollar. A quarter is one fourth of a dollar. There are four quarters and a dollar. So you relate concepts. You let them play and explore after you've explained this to them. Also, there are simple, age-appropriate puzzles and logic problems that you can get online or at the library, so it's practically free. If you're sitting with a child who's doing these simple problems, use the Socratic method. Don't provide them an answer. Ask them questions. And after they sort of get it, let them explore and invent. Don't worry about if they get the right answer right away. All that exploration and discovery is what really helps them. So, if all of you can help, we don't have to wait for our schools to change. We can all help just a little bit, a few minutes a week, during whatever we're doing in our regular day. And soon, our student, more and more students will be able to say, I love math, and then they will be able to reach their dreams. Thank you.